Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Guthels, and this is the next video in the Debugging Your Next.js Projects with Sentry. In this video, we're going to talk about event context and custom tags. You might recall from one of the previous videos that we went over the issue dashboard that you would see anytime an error gets triggered or performance regression happens within your application. At the top of every Sentry issue, you'll find contextual information and tags to help you prioritize which issues you need to focus on. But I want to show you how to add in your own context or tags that might be useful for you when debugging your applications. So let's go back to VS Code. We still have our error in our slug TypeScript file, which does not check to make sure that questions have lengths that are greater than zero. We're going to keep that error in there so that it triggers and we can see the additional contextual information and tags that we're going to add right now. So I'm going to head up a couple of lines right before the handle update function, and I'm going to add in this line of code here. All this is doing is capturing the current session that we're in. But before we do this, we do need to actually import the um, React Next Auth uh, to this file. So go ahead and do that and save. And we can now use the session that we're currently in. And just before we call update, we're going to add in some additional information here. In our case, uh, every user does have an email address. Uh, we have admin at admin.com. So we're going to say if the data, which is our current session, has a user. If So if we have a current session and it has a user and that user has an email, um, then let's set the user's email to the data's user's email, right? So um, within Sentry, we're going to add email to that user. Now, as mentioned in the docs for enriching events, specifically adding in additional context, uh, we do need to make sure that we've imported Sentry from Sentry browser. So let's make sure we've done that. Now, because I'm specifically using the Next.js SDK and not just the browser, JavaScript browser SDK, I am going to swap this out for the Next.js Sentry SDK, but it essentially does the same thing. And now we can properly build and run. So let's go ahead and start this again. And we can see it over here in our flashcard. So we're going to refresh this page and we're going to trigger the error once again. error is triggered. We can refresh this page and we should see that we now have three events for this same issue. This is the one that happened 13 minutes ago because I just refreshed this single page. If we go to the next event, we'll see the one that happened a few seconds ago. And one thing that you might notice is that now at the very top, we have admin at admin.com, the email address for the user. We also have that down here in our tags. And then if you scroll down, we also have it here. If we look at the previous event where we did not add that event context, we'll notice that we do not have the email address here. We're just attempting to put in that IP address. We also attempt to put in the IP address here and down below, we only have IP address information for that particular user. So you could add in name here. You could add in any other information that you might know you have about a particular user. Um, if that is relevant to you being able to debug your application. So fairly simple for event contextual information. All you have to do is make sure that the file where you need to add event context has your SDK imported. And then um, in this case, I wanted to use the current session and I just set the user email to anything I want. In this case, the email from that current session. In addition to contextual information, which may be relevant to what is happening in that exact context, there might also be additional tags that you might want to include with your Sentry issues. So let's go ahead and add in a custom tag as well. I'm going to add in a tag that basically just lets us know which operation the user was attempting to perform. Here is where we're doing our updating. So right before we do an update, I'm going to say, hey, Sentry, um, not only should you set the user's email if it exists, but also go ahead and set a custom tag called operation to update. I'm also going to add this over to the handle remove. Um, so right before we do the remove, we're going to set the operation to remove and save that. 
And if we want, we could go into the create new, which is right here, and we can add that same um, request to add a custom tag operation create just before we call create uh, in our handle create function. Don't forget, we also need to import Sentry into our create new file. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll save it all. We will cancel this, rebuild and rerun, and we should see that new tag showing up in our Sentry issue. So now we'll go ahead and rerun and head back over to our flashcard application. We will refresh our page and attempt to trigger that error once again. Let's go ahead and delete what is closure, attempt to update. Notice that that error is triggered in our JavaScript console. Head over to our issue page within Sentry and click refresh. And now we'll see that we have four events. We're on the one from 18 minutes ago. We can also go to the one from five minutes ago. Uh, we'll see that we have the email address in that case. And from a few seconds ago, not only do we have that email address, but now we also have this additional tag here, operation update. So when we attempted to update is when that um, error happened. You'll notice that with event context or custom tags, this does not create a completely new issue like it did when we uploaded the source maps in one of the previous videos in the series. That's because that is just additional information on a similar issue or the same issue that's happening in the code. So Sentry does understand that this code right here is triggering the issue. It's the same issue that users are facing and you may just be adding additional information. This is really important because let's say you get an initial issue and you didn't have some of those custom tags or contextual information added before you got that issue. And you do want to resolve it, but you want to use contextual information or custom tags to determine whether it should be prioritized over other issues that you're looking to resolve. So you may want to add in that context or tag to um, then determine if it shows up a lot more for certain people at certain times of the day, whatever it might be. Custom tags are very useful when you're in this issues view for all of your issues because you can essentially um, look up, you know, just update operations, issues that just affected update operations and determine whether or not um, that is an issue that you want to try to resolve. To add contextual information, make sure you have imported Sentry to that file and simply ask Sentry to set the context for a particular bit of information. It can be set a user, set context that is completely unique to your application um, or whatever it is that you want to do. For custom tags, again, make sure that you've imported the SDK and then you just set the tag where the first parameter is whatever the tag category is and the second parameter is the value of that tag. Fairly simple and adds a lot of value to the issue dashboard for the issues that you're seeing in your application.